Hi everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39. Today I'm going to make some fall banners and I'd like to show you how I make them. So the first banner that I want to show you is pretty simple to make. Um, first of all, I'll let you know that I started off using these dies from Momenta. They are uh, 11 pieces and they're banner dies. The biggest one I think is about 6 inches. Let me see. Oh, it's 5 inches. And then the smallest one is oh, just about an inch and a quarter. Um, and if you don't have this die set, which by the way I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance, if you don't have this die set, you could just make one die and use that as a pattern and just trace it and cut. I mean, it's pretty simple. And there's different die configurations. You can make the pennant looking one besides this. But this was a fun die set to use, and I want to show you how I use that. So since there are a lot of different sizes, I took advantage of that to uh, make some layers. So obviously the bottom layer is with this beige cardstock. And then there's this marigold yellow cardstock on top of it. And then I use pattern paper. I did use a punch to make the scallop circle. And I used my Cricut to cut, cut out the letters. But you don't have to if you don't have a Cricut. You know, you could um, use stickers. If you have letter stickers, that would work. You could stencil. You could, oh, there's so many different things. You could handwrite them if your handwriting is good. Um, and then another way you could use letters is sometimes on paper pads you get the 12 by 12 page that has letters on it, like that one, and you could just cut the letters apart from that. So um, a lot of people have stickers, so that is probably the easiest. Now the way that I hung this one is I just took a hole punch and simply put a hole on each side about half an inch in um, and then just strung it that way. So that is the simplest method, method number one. So I'm going to move these out of the way and then I'll bring you down to see this. So this one actually I'm going to turn these over. When I was using the die to cut out this, I allowed the die uh, to sit on the paper. All right, let me show you. Just add some extra room there and have this cutting, that one, go off the edge. And then you'll take a pair of scissors and make it longer than you want. So um, that way I could make this a little bit longer. And when I was done, I just simply scored it at half an, um, I think I went three quarters of an inch, depends on the size of it. But I started here at five and a quarter and then another quarter inch and then just folded it. So then you can take the string and simply put it in. And I just taped the back of it because nobody ever sees the back. Although I was thinking, if you're really creative, you could have done, taken another die and cut it in the same color and put it on the back and you could flip you could make a project to flip so you could have Happy Halloween or Boo or Happy Fall or whatever, so you could do that. Now on this one, so obviously I cut three different sizes, and I wanted it to sort of stand out, so I just adhered some uh, dimensional tape pop dots along the top here, so it wouldn't be flat on here, just so it would have a little more just dimension. Um, and I did the same with the letters. I popped the letters up so you can see this is popped up, this is popped up, and the letter is popped up just to add a little more interest. This was another die I had that was a circle punch, and again, the letters I cut out with my Cricut. This paper, by the way, was using this spiced pumpkin paper pad. It was a hot buy from... Uh, Michaels. So that is another way of attaching the string through the dies to make a banner. All right, let me show you yet another way. All right, so this is another way that I like to 
attach the string when I'm making a banner. And by the way, you could use fabric. You don't actually need um, string. So I like using the eyelets. I don't know about you, but I have eyelets in my stash. And in this case, I just, this is obviously a different, this is sort of a banner looking die. And the, the lettering again, I printed out for my Cricut and then cut. But I just took a piece, this is about an inch and a quarter, and I scored it at half an inch. And then I cut a piece of corresponding paper. This one doesn't match with that, obviously, but uh, corresponding paper about three-eighths of an inch and just attached that. Um, this one's a little bit wider. I think that's three-quarters of an inch and that may be half an inch. But in any case, um, you just attach it to this paper. You fold it and then you put it on and then you put the eyelets on. So the back of it just looks like that. You know, the, nothing very exciting. But that is a nice finished look. Um, and in this case, I used the 110 pound cardstock. I didn't do three layers, I just did two. But it's a nice, sturdy banner. All right, and I'm going to show you this other banner and show you different ways of attaching the string to the top. And while you see this, you're going to get so many ideas on how to use up all of the Halloween stuff in your stash because believe me there are a thousand different fun things you can do with your Halloween stash. Um, with this with this die set you get this smaller die. So you will end up cutting a die similar to this. Um, you can use this die, just score it at the top or simply fold it. And then in this case I used brads. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And so see, I punched a circle and then put the spider bread. Made it a little bit longer. I punched holes through the front of the, the, the little flag, the, the pennant, and then the back of it. And then put in a bread. So I have these cool spider breads. I mean, what else are you going to do with those? This is just plain white brads on an orange circle. See, look, I used ribbon on here. This was a sticker, believe it or not, in my kit. I just layered that up on pop dots. I had these kind of um, brads in my stash for a million years. This actually needs a circle on it. I used another one of the spider brads there. That I had probably from Tim Holtz is my guess. This is washi tape, I believe. That was in my stash. This was just a piece of paper that has um, alcohol ink. And then here's a cute little clothespin. And that's using just a small brad. This I used washi tape and put an orange brad on. I cut that out of paper on top of, uh, what the heck is that stuff? And then I made a rosette. This has ribbon on top of it, and I tied a little bit of silver metallic thread. I used stars. I cut out stuff and had stickers, I mean. And then this one, I have a little spider hanging on the bottom. 31, I had these spiders in my stash. A little bit of a spider web in orange. And again, I cut out different shapes of these. And of course, I used this fun fur yarn, I guess you call it. Um, that was in my stash, so I got to use that up. That was a die cut. That's just a big thing of washi tape. Just a couple of little pieces of paper. And then again, there's my bread. This is like big, thick cheesecloth that I put on. And to keep anchor it, I had some uh, die cuts. Um, and then this again is another sticker, a dimensional sticker, but a sticker that says Wicked. I know that's Tim Holtz. Use thread. I use baker's twine. A die cut. I cut these to be a little different. These bats were um, brads from in my stash, but didn't they look cool with this whole setting? Some flowers I had. Yeah, so then that's how I put this group of banners together. And with this one, you see, I use different shapes. 
So this, if you have the die set, you could just use this shape all across. It doesn't matter. But before I had the die, I just cut out a pennant, just hand cut it myself, and then I made a template and then continued cutting. It's the same with this. I just made a template and cut it out and uh, just went from there. All right, and real quick, I'm going to finish this one set of banners. It'll say fall, so I did the last three. Now again, I used two different sizes of this die set, the largest and then the next one. Um, again, you could just cut your own. So I have this craft colored cardstock, and then I have the one to go on top of it. I'm just going to simply take some glue. and put it on. I've been using the quick dry tacky glue, um, but I'd use whatever glue you have on hand. I'm not that worried about uh, acid free. All right, so here we have this. And now I had cut two of these, one out of the craft cardstock, which is going to be the base, and one out of uh, some designer paper. And I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. So obviously they're the same size. But I'm just going to cut off oh, a little more than an eighth of an inch on the one with the design on it. And then I'm going to cut it uh, about that big and glue that down as well. Is it perfect? No. Is it close enough? Yeah. It'll work. And then I'm going to grab my scoreboard. Brand new scoreboard to me in all of the years that I've been crafting. I haven't had a new scoreboard. All right. So I am going to go up to right after where that paper is. So uh, three quarters and then a half. Oops. And that's all the scoring we need to do. And I'm going to fold that. And I already have done one of them. And I'll take the glue and just put it on the tip and put it on the back. And that will go like that. So it's going to stick up. You know, it's not going to be flat. I'll hold that down for a second. You could always use a clothespin or something to hold it while it dries. But, you know, glue dries pretty fast. It absorbs into the paper. And then I'll do this one and put it at the same distance. So that is about a, a little less than half an inch. So I did the same with this one. And that will dry on this. And then I'll take it. I already put the app. And this, incidentally, was using this cut apart sheet. I just cut it out the letters and then I used a scallop circle to, um, to cut it. And I did go by the edge, use some. Um, Tim Holtz Distressing Ink on the edges, just so it would stand out a little. It didn't get too muddy. I don't know if I should have chosen this pattern, but it was the last piece of paper I had left in the set, and I was trying to use it all up. All right, now I have this jute. Um, earlier, I had taken a bit of glue and put it on the end so it doesn't unravel as I'm trying to thread that. And I'm going to leave, I don't know, maybe about a foot. And then just simply, well, I'll start with this one so that'll get a second to dry. Just simply go through here. 
through each one, and that is all you have to do to thread the banner. Now, besides using the jute, uh, again, you could use baker's twine. If you had some fabric that you just tore into strips, you could use that. Um, and if you had fabric you tore into strips, you could take extra strips and just uh, hang it in between the different banners just for some added interest. So this one says fall, and that's pretty, to me, that's pretty boring. Um, the other one that I showed in the beginning, it had fall, but on each side had an extra banner with a leaf on it. You could do that. You could just have a plain banner. I mean, really. That is all that there is to it. You know what? I should have switched this. I'm going to do that now. Because these are the same. I don't want to have the same next to each other. Again, I was using the last of the paper um, that I had in this paper collection. It was another autumn collection. And I had used most of it for a mini album. This one I did not put glue on the end. So see how it's fraying? Alrighty. That looks better to me. You know, unusual colors for a fall, um, a fall project, really. I mean, when you look at it, it's it's uh, a muted pink and blue, but it works. It, it's got a little bit of an orangey color to it. Um, and this would be cute just to put on a door or um, just somewhere. I have pictures of putting my fall banner over the fireplace and I have another autumn banner that would work and of course you could say give thanks or gather or gather here there are so many different sayings you could do for this time of year anyhow you get the idea pretty simple isn't it all right go ahead and go make one and show me what you've made go ahead and post it in my Instagram account which is project 39 design and um, show me what fall banners you've made whether you've made it this year or made it in the past Again, thanks so much for watching.